Country Assassins TV is brought to you in part by Deer 30 Mineral, Bone Brew, Antler Fuel, Habit Outdoors, Our Gear, Your Adventure, Calhoun Outfitters, Mouse Trap Turkey Call, Don't Just Call Them, Trap Them, Outright Hunting Products, Morph Pro Bow Hanger System, Dog Firearms. Welcome everybody to Season 2 of Archery Assassins TV. Today is a special hunt that I got Jacob Beamer here. He's going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, 2016, we uh, took a little elk hunting trip and it's his first time going, our second time going, and uh, I want to give you guys the opportunity to hear his backstory of of him, what he grew up doing, and his passions and the stuff that he likes to do because let me tell you this kid right here, he puts more hours in the woods and literally just you cannot outdo him when it comes to food plots and everything else. So hunting is his passion and definitely elk hunting will be his next passion. I guarantee it. Jacob, tell us a little bit about uh, what happened up there. All right, so this hunt started out with Caleb calling me up in January and asking if I was able to go on an elk hunt in September. And I told him, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'm really busy with work, running an asphalt plant for a living, work 70, 80 hours a week during September. But I told him I'd call my supervisor and I'd try my hardest. Um, got real lucky to even be able to go. Another guy had already planned on going and uh, he'd backed out on it. So I got invited, called and talked to my supervisor and he knew this was a hunt of a lifetime, uh, one of my dream hunts. I've always wanted to go elk hunting. Ever since I, I started bow hunting, started turkey hunting, uh, everybody's always told me, you know, wait till you go elk hunting. You, if you think turkey gobbling in the morning is fun, wait till you hear an elk bugle. And I had no idea that it was going to be like it was. Scott's been doing it for since he was a little kid. You know, his dad, dad loved it out there. Oh yeah, it's definitely a family business. I mean, look at look at Scott's kids. You know, they were out there helping us. You know, picking up the horns <laughs> and everything. Oh right? yeah, I mean, help giving us ear to ear. Here, oh yeah, it's definitely a family atmosphere. You couldn't ask for. I mean, they treat you like family too. That was the, that was probably the best part. Yeah, felt right at home with them. And, like you were saying, yeah, they they'll they'll bring supplies if you need them, especially their drop camps. I think they visit their drop camps every day or every other day, depending on how far they are or what they need. And they're willing to. Yeah, I think they go in every every couple of days. They'll go up and check ice and make sure that uh, on the drop camps they got ice if they got plenty of food, whatever. Um, they offer they offer a wide range of stuff. I mean, they don't just don't offer elk hunting. You know, they got bear hunting that they do too. You know, they got fully guided hunts, rifle hunting, and stuff like that. Everything that they do, I mean, it's all based out of this camp, a camp that's been in Scott's family for generations, and he takes great pride in that. That right there is his world. I mean, his family in that camp is everything to him. Time to ditch that old salt block and corn pile routine.
our two-part mineral and protein attractive system means more inches in your trophy room. Don't let the next big thing pass you by. Time for change. It's Deer 30. Calhoun Outfitters, located just west of Delta, Colorado. Providing fully and semi-guided elk, mule deer, and black bear hunts in the beautiful backcountry of the Colorado Mountain Plateaus. Great family atmosphere and knowledgeable guide to put you on that trophy of a lifetime. Give Scott Calhoun a call or check him out on Facebook. You know, fast forward to September. Um, it was a disaster. Bought a new house. I was right in the middle of moving. Would we move the week before you guys were helping me move and, and trying to get everything separated apart from moving? And we didn't really care about what you had to move into the house. We just yeah. had to get your hunting stuff ready so we could head out. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to store it, you know, where I can get to it, and not worry about the rest of the stuff. But uh, you know, I was able to take off of work, and we hit the road um, that Friday evening. I think it was was it like a 14-hour drive for us, I believe. From here, and you know, we had quite a bit of weather we had to drive through. I didn't think we were gonna make it. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, now we got about two o'clock in the morning trying to find a fuel station with like 50 miles to go. <laughs> trying to find diesel at two o'clock in the morning. There's no gas stations in Western Kansas, but we were heading west and we were chasing elk, so we were we were amped. I, yeah. I didn't sleep at all the whole way there, and I wasn't even driving. I, I wanted to see the mountains. Yeah, you know, I had never seen the mountains before in my life. I've, Hunted a lot, but it's always been cent you know centered here in Kansas, and you know, we're Sound heading. It. Oh, we're heading to the big state of Colorado, and I had no idea what I was in for. We went ahead and dropped over the bluff and set up there, where we got into like one of the worst <laughs> storms I've ever been in. <laughs> 60 yeah. mile an hour winds and hail. We go to leave and I was just going to be Justin's cameraman. I asked him, I said, you think I need my insulates? He says, oh no, it's nice out. You know, it's 60 degrees out. Yeah. And lo and behold, it starts raining and the rain turns to hail. 30 and degrees, 60 it, mile an hour winds. Oh yeah. Uh, the rain froze on the ground at the temperature. I mean, I had no idea how quick the weather could change there. You know, I'm used to changing in Kansas here pretty quickly, but and up in the high altitude, it really, really can change in a hurry. And we yeah. were there the third week of September. Yeah, third week of September. Bulls bugling. Oh, yeah, they were fired up. And yeah. We went out that very first morning. Um, we got out there, we thought early, and uh, we got out there and started to head into the location that we thought we wanted. We actually <laughs> we got up late, actually. It was a long drive, and we was, we was pretty tired, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we pulled all night the night before, so about, we were dragging a little bit that morning. And about 6.30, that sun come up, and what did you hear? Oh, yeah. We heard there was three separate bulls bugling right there in front of us. And I looked at Justin. I thought somebody walked in on us. I said, oh, somebody's, you know, that's not a bull bugling, is it? <laughs> said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're in them. We got to do something because we're out in the middle of, we're standing in the middle of a pond. They call it like a beaver pond, and we're on the, di the dam of it, and just out in the middle of nowhere, and you're looking around, and... There ain't no trees around you. The closest trees and brush and cover that we had was about 80 yards from us, and it's like <laughs> just duck down as low as you can get and get in there. Oh yeah, we could. I mean, we could hear cows mewing and you know walking around. And I knew we were right on top of them, but we just couldn't. They got close. I yeah, mean, they, they got were. real close. There just wasn't no vision being able to see them. But then the, we actually was calling them cows in, and then for some reason I think that bull. He didn't want them getting that far down in there, so he cut them yeah. off and pushed them back up in that hill. It being the first day, like you said, we didn't want to get in there and try to booger anything out of the area. We just wanted to kind of, you know, feel the woods out. It's my, my second time, your first time, so I yeah. just kind of wanted you to, to get the full effect and just kind of take it easy and not just go out there just complete nuts. I know that, that first bugle we heard. <laughs> I must have had a pretty good look on my face because Justin just smiling. <laughs> oh yeah, it I was, was it was amazing. Lit up. Yeah. It's like it's like a like a kid getting a brand new uh, Daisy Red Rider BB gun for Christmas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Christmas story. Oh yeah. That the smile on his face, Jacob had the exact same thing, you know. And I told him I'm like, 
it's it's amazing, man. We got we got to get doing something because we're we're just right here. We're oh, yeah. going. Calhoun Outfitters, located just west of Delta, Colorado, providing fully and semi-guided elk, mule deer, and black bear hunts in the beautiful backcountry of the Colorado Mountain Plateaus. Great family atmosphere and knowledgeable guide to put you on that trophy of a lifetime. Give Scott Calhoun a call or check him out on Facebook. Time to ditch that old salt block and corn pile routine. Our two-part mineral and protein attractive system means more inches in your trophy room. Don't let the next big thing pass you by. Time for change. It's Deer 30. Colorado for a couple days now so we got here yesterday at around one o'clock in the afternoon got settled in with our uh, our outfitter we come out we did a little bit of scouting we checked this area out and uh, JB and I man we sat here and we we decided we was gonna come down here and we was gonna tackle this this morning literally we came in across this low lying area set up behind this pond this morning. We had three different bulls bugling at us up on this ridge. A bunch of cows with them. So we climbed up this ridge and... A little louder. A little? Yeah, I thought a little louder. Oh. <laughs> we gotta let people hear us, yes. Climbed up this ridge and got in position on these... Uh, what was it, 20 other. minutes? Yeah, maybe 20 minutes. We hadn't even started calling yet. We decided to, we decided to find ourselves uh, an, an open area and you're gonna see from the footage and everything else we didn't we didn't get a chance to to film these elk coming in you can literally see maybe 30 yards in front of you it's it's super super trashy in here and a cow elk uh, was coming up the ridge beamer smacked me on the arm he says they're right there i drew back on the cow uh we're not I mean, we're not trophy hunters. We you know we we just want to we want to harvest a nice animal and, and put it put forth the work and, and enjoy this. And uh, I I draw back on that elk, that cow elk, and Beamer says, "You want her?" And I said, "Yeah." He says that bull's got to be here somewhere, and he come crashing in up over this little ridge, right in on us. And I turn, and Beamer smoked him right between right between the front shoulders. Right in the bread basket. I knew Justin was at full draw on that cow, but there was a tree in his way, so I went ahead and drew and leaned around and put it on him. It's uh, it's it's super exciting and it's very very emotional right now. Our <laughs> our bull is right behind us, yep. and uh, right now it's it's pretty it's pretty not real clean right now. So we gotta we're gonna go over here and kind of get some stuff taken care of and we'll we'll get Jacob's hands on it and everything else so just give us a few minutes and we're going to get this taken care of and we'll be right back. There's a gamer with archery assassins here. We're in Colorado. It's uh, our first day of hunting actually. We came in yesterday and did a little bit of scouting. Oh, got up on this ridge and it was about 11.45 I think this guy come by. Pushed and a couple cows and my first elk, 1045 I guess it was, that's my first elk, it's a nice 6x6, six six. but well I couldn't have done it without Justin, he's back here behind the camera moving up and Dude, 
tell you what, man, I'm, I'm more than happy with what we got here. This, this is a lot of hard work, dude. This is a lot of hard work. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you, man. We got back straps left. Uh, everything else is in bags. Hearts in there. We got a bunch of meat in that, that bag. We're going to put the back straps in it. Got to get one more tenon rolling out. Okay. Whatever neck meat and the cape is all attached. We just got to get it up to the bottom of the head and get it hacked off. Okay. We really don't know what the hell they did, to tell you the truth. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're just trying to keep the cape open as possible and mm -hmm. keep the meat cool. I've got, it'll be fine. It, I got salt and everything at the meat house and we'll get her hung so, for the night and get it chilled off and it'll be good. Well, if you guys want to follow us to our crib. Yep. <laughs> for the last three hours. <laughs> Perfect. We'll show you where we're at. Give it a walk through. You should have called Scotty about an hour earlier. <laughs> Anybody bring any water? Yeah, I got, a, I got a bottle. They're actually in our pack, but <laughs> once I get up there, I'll get you some. We got Justin Engel, Jacob Bamer, and Scott Calhoun here as Cal, uh, Calhoun Outfitters. He uh, he knows his bulls. He he told us that we needed to come up in here, and it's it's not just a walk in the park. It is definitely a, it's definitely a hike, and it's definitely work. And we uh, we got up this morning, got up nice and early, got around. Beamer is chomping at the bit. He's like, come on, let's get going. About 5.20, we headed out. Made our journey down here, and it paid off, man. I, we thank you a lot, Scott. We really do. This no problem. Sure I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming out. It's not over. No, it's not. We still got some more to go. This is day, day one, baby. Day so, one. <laughs> so. This is day one being out here, and we were on the elk since 7 this morning, and we heard our first bugle at 7, and we just kind of slowly worked our way up the hill, and Got up in here, found that opening, and we didn't even have a chance to have a chance to call a second time. We made some calls down here; he wouldn't come off the hill, so we decided to go meet him. And that's what we did. We got in pretty close and made a little rackets as we were walking. They come running. He threw a nice bugle out. I told Beamer, I was like, dude, within 100 yards, and we got back down the ravine in an opening. And that wasn't two minutes later. There's two cows in front of him, and. He came behind and pushing, stopped at 21 yards, gave me a facing shot. I'm glad I didn't shoot the cow now. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your ranch, Scott, and tell us how long you've been doing this, man. It seems like you got a lot of knowledge in the, the elk industry. So, Well, my grandpa bought our piece of property that we're staying at in 1916. Um, kept going down through the generations and generations. My dad started the outfitting 30 years ago. And uh, since I was a kid, been tromping these mountains, I remember, you know, four or five years old, coming through with Dad and all the hunters and just getting to know the land pretty good. And about 10 years ago, me and my dad went in partners and uh, I got into the outfitting side by side with him. Um, here, three years ago when he passed, I kept it going and um, loved to do it. It's a passion of mine. and won't ever stop. Um, got some good help, Eugene Kennedy back there, and um, it's a team effort, that's for sure. It ain't just me. Um, it trinkles down from me, my wife, the cook, <laughs> my kids having the support back there at camp. My, well, I tell you what, that was that was, that was a really good home cooked meal we had last night. Yeah. I slept oh, yeah. like a baby. Yeah. So, well, we wouldn't be able to track this bad boy down if we wouldn't have that good home cooked <laughs> meal. Was, there, was definitely some, there was definitely some energy behind that plate of food. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a good process. We got a good thing and a good system down, that's for sure. Uh, you know, Like I said, my son's already walking around with my pack and his little bow around the cabin <laughs> and he's going hunting. So that's exactly what I did and he's following in the same footsteps and I'm very proud of that. And, it's nice having you guys out here that you guys know the hunting deal. So you guys know the well, ins and outs of hunting. and We I, definitely do now, for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it comes so. to elk hunting, we can't say that uh, we haven't we haven't got it done at least once. Yep. yep. So, man, thank you very much no, once thank again, you guys. dude. Yep. Thank I you appreciate again. It. Appreciate you having us. If you get so. a chance, you get a chance, you want to go elk hunting, get a hold of Scott Calhoun with Calhoun Outfitters. You can find him on Facebook. Message the guy book up quick. I mean, we was booked for two years in yep. advance, so 
he will put you on the elk. He'll tell you where he needs to go. I bet he's three, four. Yeah, he's close. Fresh. Yeah, he's four. Three, four. Yeah. There you go, man. You even got yourself a mature bull. Yeah, no kidding. It calls to you at sunrise. It whispers in the rustling leaves, in the mist at dawn. You feel it in the quiet solitude of a hunt, in the crisp morning air. It's in the snap of twigs under your feet, and that pounding rush as you steady your shot. You hear it in time shared with friends, in exploration, discovery. It's in the sound of crickets at twilight, in stories told around a crackling campfire. Few pause to listen, fewer still pursue it. But you know the voice well. It's part of who you are. Whenever adventure calls, be ready. Habit Outdoors. Our gear, your adventure. Calhoun Outfitters, located just west of Delta, Colorado. Providing fully and semi-guided elk, mule deer, and black bear hunts in the beautiful backcountry of the Colorado Mountain Plateaus. Great family atmosphere and knowledgeable guide to put you on that trophy of a lifetime. Give Scott Calhoun a call or check him out on Facebook. So Scott gets there, he hauls pretty much about everything that we had cut up down there already for us. I got, I was, I was able to haul one quarter down for you, <laughs> you know, that uh, Scott hauled the rest of it down and uh, they got all packed up on horses and Caleb and I kind of hung back a little bit and Scott and them headed back to camp and Caleb and I actually got lost for about 45 minutes on the way back to the camp. And we showed back up there and Scott, you know, he'd already had the the elk hung up inside the meat room. You know, they got a meat room up there that keeps the meat nice and cool, uh, keeps the bears off or you know, any kind of animals that could come in and take your game away from you. It's all closed in. And that next morning, you know, his wife Kersey, she loaded up all that meat and took it in there to that meat processing plant for you. Yeah, that was very nice because yeah, I was I was a little worried because it was it was gonna be too warm. Yeah, there's no way that we could leave that elk there. All we still got six days. Yeah, we still had six days left of hunting. I thought, man, I'm gonna have to you know kill a day of of hunting with everybody or and take this elk in. I didn't know exactly what to expect. There was no way we were gonna be able to keep it in coolers for six days. We'd have you know I'd have had another six hundred dollars in ice probably. <laughs> wow, what a great hunt that was, Jacob. It's a uh, truly an honor to be able to go up there and call you in your first bowl and. Watch you stick an arrow on one, and just just glad you got that opportunity to be able to come along with us, man. I sure like to, you know, tell Scott Calhoun, thank you for inviting us out. Um, if anybody else would like to go on a hunt of a lifetime and have a an adventure like we did, click the link below. That'll take you to Calhoun's Facebook page. You know, he's really good about keeping up with Facebook and he'll give you all the information you need from season dates. Um, like he actually sends out a welcome packet each year and tells you what dates and you know what your deposit is and what he has available. Heck yeah. And uh, you know we just on behalf of Archie Assassins we want to thank you all for watching us and following us and uh, make sure you check us out on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter.
about this for an eternity, but as you can see, we're, we're a mile away from camp, and we got a lot of work to do. We got to get a hold of somebody. We got to start getting this thing caved out, opened up, so he don't cook. All right, man. Let's get to work, buddy. Good job, man. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't I? Yeah, yeah. I said there, I was like, my God, I ain't never seen a Colorado leopard frog. <laughs> yeah. Holy well, cow, there's two of them. He's like, yeah, there's a bunch over here, too. <laughs> I care less about them elk. I was looking at them leopard frogs. I was like, now, I was thinking about channel catfishing. <laughs> this 